I want to bring to your attention a role of support that you can bring in to help you and your family that you may not have thought was accessible for you. And that is hiring someone to come into your home and batch cook meals for you a couple times a month. Yes, that would mean a personal chef, but I think as soon as someone hears that word, they think immediately, oh, there's no way that I can afford that. That's what I thought too before I started hiring someone to come in and help me just take this load off of having all the pressure on my shoulders of doing meals seven days a week, three times a day to feed my family. Eating home-cooked meals is a really high priority for my family and I because when we do eat out at restaurants, our body just immediately feels it. We feel sick and we don't feel supported and nourished and good. And in our city, there's only about two restaurants that we can go to anyways that we feel good about eating and it's expensive. Because the majority of food preparation does fall on my shoulders, my daughter is homeschooled and she's with me all day and my husband works a traditional nine to five job. By the time he gets off work, my daughter and he both really need connection with each other and I really need to disconnect and have some alone time and some adult stimulation by then too. And even when he does try to help out with food, then there are two of us that are absolutely like pushed to our maximum in tasks because you know what it's like to run a household. There's always something to clean. Even when you live very minimalistic and you don't have a lot of items, we're living in a 700 square foot apartment right now. So we try to only keep material items in our house that we really love. And even with those principles and living simply and living slowly, there's just still always something to clean or food to be made or someone to care for. So I'm a huge fan of bringing in support where it's needed and looking at your finances and seeing if where you're spending your money is in line with your values. Are the places that you're spending your money on, whether it's a car payment or a house payment or eating out at restaurants, is that money, the amount of money that's going out to all of the things in your life, is it bringing you back rest? Is it bringing you back feeling creatively expressed? Is it bringing freedom? Those are some of our core values. So I'm always weighing our purchases and where our money is going against our core values for our family. Now for us, we have decided that when we go out to eat at restaurants, that's not bringing us back the things that we love. Like for that moment, it, it alleviates us needing to um, cook a meal, but then we're hungry in just a few hours anyways. And we've spent, I mean, for a family of three, when we go out to eat, it's gonna be between 40 and $75, really no matter where we go. If we try to eat somewhere cheaper, then our bodies feel even worse, but still it's gonna be like 40 or $50. And then if we go to the restaurants, just the two restaurants that we like to go to, it's going to be about $70 for us to eat out. So instead, we take that budget that would go to eating out, you know, those two or three times a week. If we were trying to do all the meals ourselves, we kind of just fill in the blanks with restaurants maybe two or three times a week. We take that same exact budget and we hire someone to come into our house. We have someone come cook for us, a personal chef come cook for us twice a month, every 15 days, and I have her cook double or triple batches of five meals for us. And our freezer is filled and our refrigerator is filled and it's just magic, to be honest. The first time I did this, my daughter was one. So we've been hiring a personal chef to come help us for the last five years, and I've worked with four different chefs between here and Brazil. And the first time, I remember my daughter was one, and the first chef that I hired was one of my friends, and she is an aspiring professional chef, and she came in and you know spent seven hours, I think she was there for seven hours, and I came home and it was like stews and lasagnas and quiches and muffins and just like this amazing, beautiful spread on my kitchen and the kitchen was sparkling clean. I was like, oh my gosh. And then paying her that day and seeing that it was literally less than what we spend eating out in two weeks, my heart was just so full. It was a magical experience. And I was like, I will never again go without this in my life. And we haven't. So the frequency that works amazing for us is having someone come twice a month. So every 15 days. And I always make sure that she's scheduled to come right before my menstrual cycle starts, because that is a time where I have extra low energy. It's the time where I need to be going to bed at like 7.30 or 8 p.m. every night. I just don't want to be doing pushing. If I have household tasks that end up landing around my menstrual cycle, I get you know, just extra resentful. It doesn't feel good. Like I need to lean in to the fact that my body needs more rest during that time. So I can't even tell you how supportive and wonderful it is for me to know that when my menstrual cycle starts, I'm going to have my freezer and refrigerator filled with food and I can just 
go to bed with my book. My wish for you is to just know that this exists, for you to know that this could be an option in your life, whether it's now or at a later time. The first thing that's good to do is for you to take an honest look at your own budget. How many times do you eat out a week? Even if it's fast food, even if it's going to the cheapest restaurants you can, that can still add up. I have a workshop called How to Hire a Personal Chef on Any Budget, and I detail exactly how I hire someone and where I hire someone and how I work with our personal chef as well. I even give the template that I use to post the hiring ad and I give the questions I use to interview them. But just to give you an idea right now, go to any website where if you were a restaurant, you'd be hiring a chef. So if I go to Craigslist San Diego and I look at the job listings, as if I'm a cook looking for a job, it's going to tell me what hourly price range people in my area are hiring cooks for. And that's going to tell me what price range I should be hiring a chef for to come into my house and cook. And you know, a uh, price range is going to depend on somebody's experience as well. We've paid everything from 17 an hour to 30 an hour for a chef, and it's still always been cheaper than eating out. I mean, imagine someone can come into your house and in seven hours you can have five or more double or triple batch meals stored in your beautiful containers, ready to put into your freezer and your kitchen clean for you. I love cooking. Cooking for people is one of my love languages. I love preparing meals and making a beautiful table with candles and flowers and homemade bagels or biscuits and casseroles and vibrant, beautiful salads and homemade salad dressings. If you've ever stayed at my house or you've hosted me at your house, then you know that I love preparing food for the people that I love, and I still do. And I can assure you there's almost no way to get around cooking completely. Like even when we had full-time help in Brazil, we were still cooking dinners and cooking on the weekends. And now that we have help every 15 days here, I'm still cooking in some capacity every single day. I'm making salads or side dishes to go with the main dish meals. If there's a time in the week that we're just craving a different recipe, then I go in and I cook. The kitchen is available to you to cook at any time you like, but I also have that security that we have our freezer filled with delicious food as well. I don't have to survival cook. The task of cooking every single day can feel relentless, like a lot of caretaking tasks, right? They're tasks that show up every day. They never go away. They never diminish. They're just there. You wake up to them. You rise to them every day of your life. And then this is how I meal prep for us during the days when I'm exclusively cooking. So like for that eight or nine days, what I do is I just make sure I always have our freezer and cabinets stocked with a protein. So I'll have like a chicken, a beef, a fish, and beans always in my cabinets. And then I'll keep fresh seasonal vegetables and herbs. And then I'll always keep some starches too, like um, starches and grains. So I'll have like a rice, pasta, quinoa, for example, and I'll keep different sauces. So we'll have like a teriyaki sauce, um, coconut milk, we'll have tomato-based sauces, and then I can just take one of the proteins, pour a different sauce over it with some seasoning, put the seasonal vegetables on it, and then cook it down, and then put it on top of a grain or a starch. So that's kind of my go-to, and that works for me really well because I don't have to stress about like planning what the meal is going to be every day. And then I always make sure that I'm cooking in a batch where it can last us two to three days. And sometimes I have to end up even freezing the meals that I make during that time. Even on those days where the cooking does fall on me, I still do easy meals in there. The tip from my dear friend, Dina Barcella, I'll link to her below too, so you can just devour her content on food. She really helps teach people how to have a joyful relationship with family food, with feeding your family. And one of the things that she recommends, which we do, she's like, bring out the fancy platterware that you usually save for holidays and for guests and just elevate a meal with it. I have a beautiful serving platter and I serve my daughter the simplest meals on it. But for her, it's also this really beautiful and elevated experience. Am 
my daughter has plenty of time in the kitchen. I started hiring cooking help when she was one, and my daughter started chopping when she was one and has accelerated in her chopping skills. She's been cooking full meals with me since she was that age. Right now at almost six, she makes her own sandwiches from scratch and gets out all of her ingredients. She just invented this amazing cottage cheese and cilantro sandwich for herself the other day and made one for my husband and I. Um, she gets ingredients out of the cupboard and mixes them and bakes her own cakes by herself and then lets me know when she needs me to turn on the oven. She loves cooking and the kitchen is always available to her. And there's definitely enough cooking that I'm doing that she's still involved with me in some capacity. And she also sees that we bring in help. And I'm so happy that my daughter can cook and she loves interacting with food as much as I do because I know that she'll be able to nourish herself and I'm also equally as happy that she will also know how to hire help and support for herself. I don't believe that any of us mothers should be doing it all by ourselves all the time. I know you can do it. Our bodies are capable of pushing and stretching to the maximum limit to caretake for the people that we love, but at what cost? I had modeled for me that the only way to really contribute to a family is if you're like, always helping other people, you're always serving, you're always serving the family, you're putting your needs last. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna to get to know my inner world. I like to spend time by myself and it makes me a better mother. I like to feel creatively expressed and that takes time to do that. It makes me a better human for the world. I love to read, I love to write, these things elevate my experience of being alive. So I hope that you and I both get the support that we need as we walk through our journeys of motherhood because it's, it's deep and hard work for sure. And if you watch this video and you were like, yes, I want to call this into my life, I want this support for myself as well, you have more questions and you wanna hear my entire process about this, you can purchase my workshop right now, How to Hire a Personal Chef on Any Budget. It's less than one hour of content and then you can be hiring someone tomorrow. I give you the exact script that I use to post and hire somebody, um, give you ideas of places to hire. I give you all of the interview questions that I use to get on the phone and interview someone. I tell you how I prep my kitchen the day before they get there, what to expect the first day, the kitchen tools and supplies that I think are needed, is how I select recipes, handle groceries, and what I freeze in as well. So you'll really get my full experience there. And if you have any questions left over afterwards, please email me. I'm super happy to assist anyone that's gone through the workshop. And I wish you so much rest and support.